Here are the potholes and pitfalls of becoming an innovator. There's actually just one. It's mastering your inner self-critic. That is your biggest hurdle in every aspect of what we're talking about. Mastering your inner self-critic is your biggest hurdle. The first thing you need to do is name that self-critic because, spoiler, it's not really you. The voice in your head is not you. The voice in your head is talking to you and you're having a reaction to the voice in your head, which is what makes us know that the voices in our head putting us down or being our cheerleaders are not our true selves. They're memories of other people. They're impressions of who we think we should be. They're society's expectations on us. And they're good and bad voices, right? We have a cheerleader saying, you can do it, you're amazing. But we also have pretty strong self-critics. The problem is we don't identify that as an external voice acting on our true selves. The self-critic was designed back in the early days of humanity as a protection mechanism. Instincts and awareness and this idea of communication beyond verbal, helping us grow and survive. The reality is, fortunately, most of you learning this lesson are on a computer and you're in a safe enough environment to listen to this. So survival might not be something on the top of your mind right now. So that self-critic isn't relevant today like it was before. It's actually holding you back from being your true self. So step one, give it a name because it's not you. Let's call mine Bill. Bill's an asshole. Uh, he's really negative and we'll talk through what Bill does for me and hopefully you can think through and be experiential in your own existence and hear your voice and give it a name. It could be a male or a female. So first know the tactics. In general, self-critics in our minds do one or more of four things. First, they're very self-limiting. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the time. You can't do it. They make assumptions. Self-critics think they're psychic. They tell you what other people are going to think before you've even told them the idea. Isn't that remarkable? We're skeptical of someone telling us who we are, and yet we let this inner self-critic tell us what other people are going to think, do, feel before it even happens. Or be a mind reader into their experience and assume what they're feeling without even asking them. They make a lot of assumptions. They tell us what we can and can't do before we've even tried. And then they assume what other people are going to think and feel about us without any evidence of that person or the context of the situation. The third thing they do is called reruns. And, you know, taking an experience and applying one piece of feedback to everything. So we're rerunning something in our head. For example, I used to work nights when I was in my early 20s. And I would wake up and actually be tired. So that thought, when I wake up and I'm tired, has stuck with me decades later. And I have to be really mindful to retrain myself and say, oh, I woke up, I just thought, or Bill told me I'm tired. That's not true at all. I slept great last night. But a couple years of waking up tired and having that thought has become a rerun in my head. It's almost like thought muscle memory. And finally, other people's thoughts. If you grew up in a household or with friends that were mean to you, those thoughts can echo in your head, but that's just it. It's just an echo. So being mindful that someone told Bill 15 years ago that those pants didn't make you look good, that thought is still echoing in your head. And if we're not conscious of it, we think that happened yesterday or literally right now. But they're not talking about the pants you're wearing today. They're not talking about you in this light. That was an echo of a voice 
from someone who had their own experience and issues decades ago that still is bouncing around in your head because Bill remembered it and is just reiterating it. So the self-critic and the cheerleader, but we're just focusing on the, the deterrent self-critic, is not you. It's a part of you that's actually influencing your true self. Give it a name. Know the limiting tactics. And now you got to know the personality because the personality is really what gets this one. There are, in general, four personalities for an inner self-critic. The worrier. Imagine your self-critic is constantly, what's going to happen? Should we do this? What if everything fails? And you just, you spiral. The voice in your head is causing your true self to worry. The voice in your head is the worrier. We've all been around worry wards. They make you anxious just listening to them. There's a voice in your head potentially doing that to you. Well, no wonder you're questioning yourself. The critic. You can't do it. You're not good enough. Everyone's judging you. The victim. Poor me. If only. I only have an associate's degree. I had to take student loans in college, so I'm still paying back debt. My commute's really long. I don't get enough sleep. I don't have the good friends or support system. I'm the perfectionist. If it's not perfect, it'll fail. Mine is the perfectionist. And we have to be really careful because sometimes the perfectionist will make it so if it's not perfect, we're not going to do it in the first place. I've noticed that certain types of athletes and dancers um, have a perfectionist voice in their head. Again, echoing assumptions and reruns of dance teachers and experiences in their past, really pushing to be perfect and buttoned up before you can do anything. The reality is you end up doing nothing. And step four is the solution. You've got to figure out a way to drown out and minimize that voice. And there's four ways to do it. One, visualize what you want. Go there. It's really, really hard. Visualize waking up in the morning and not being anxious about your job. Not being anxious about the next step you're going to take. Visualize just waking up and having a beautiful morning. Visualize walking into work and having an amazing brainstorming session. Visualize the solution to your problems. Visualize an hour without a voice telling you you're not good enough. Have a growth mindset. A growth mindset is truly a, just a belief that we all have the capacity to grow and learn. You were born without being able to speak or walk. And yet, within a few years, you learned both. You learned how to read. You learned how to do math. You learned how to get through high school. Or you're in high school right now and you're learning skills that you're developing from being in grade school. Or you're 50 years old and you're watching this and you learned how to be a parent or an aunt or a boss. You learned how to commute to work. You learned how to drive a car. You learned how to pay your credit cards. You learned. So. You actually have the capacity to continue to grow and learn. You don't wake up one day and say, I can't learn this anymore. It's just functionally not true. But you have to believe it. The growth mindset is the mindset that says, I can do this. And finally, question the voice. Question the voice. You don't have to change it. You don't have to pretend to mute it, but just question it. Where's that coming from? Have I heard that before somewhere else? Is that really about right now or am I remembering something from before? And the fourth is see the lies. Your inner critic is lying to you. I'm going to say that again. Your inner critic is lying to you. And you know their lies because you're reacting to them and it doesn't make you feel good. I mean, don't live in a world that way. Truth is you feeling great about yourself and having capacity. If you want to do something and it makes you feel excited and good and someone else is telling you not to and makes you feel bad, that person's full of it. And if that person is the voice in your head, own it. They're lying to you. You can do it. It is fun. You are worth it. And if you're not sure how to do it, you're going to figure it out. And there are people in this world that want to help you. I'm one of them. So we're going to stop here, and I want you to sit and reflect on this for a few minutes. 
name your inner critic, know the tactics, understand their personality nuances, and start to plan your rewiring plan, visualizing your goals, believing that you can grow and learn, questioning that voice in your head when you hear it, and remembering that it's lying to you. You are an innovator. You have all the capacity in the world.